Hello, welcome to another 8-minute demo. Today we're going to be looking at the Invoke Web Services object in Opalis. My name is Charles Joy. I'm a tech evangelist for Solutions Architecture for the System Center suite of products. Today is all about web services, so let's take a look at what the options we have as far as Opalis and web services. Well, I guess if you watched my uh, quick integration kit video tutorial series, we did use web services in the uh, SDK portion. So there was uh, use of the WSDL and bringing that into Opalis. This demonstration is actually going to use the Invoke Web Services object, which is located in the Utilities panel. So if we open up Utilities and then scroll over, we find Invoke Web Services. So let's go and grab it and look for what it's asking us for. Let's open this guy up. Well, it looks like we're just looking for a WSDL and then a method and then some XML request payload. Because Opalis is just drag and drop and fill out forms, we can just start in on this. So I guess it's looking for a file or I have it on good authority that you could put in a Web Services WSDL URL in there. And I just so happen to have a couple. We'll take a look at each one of these before we get into the example. So the first one I'm going to pull is the Terra server. So I'm just going to copy that and paste that in here. Now, method. Now, I don't have any of these memorized, and you know the WSDL could change over time. So what we're going to do is just enumerate what's there. Opalis has this built in already, so let's click on this. And this is going out to that web service live on the Internet. So that's one of the requirements for using the web services object. If you're trying to touch um, services on the web, uh, you're going to have to have an internet connection. So what I did there was just click on the method button and it went out and read that WSDL and enumerated it into a pick list, essentially. What we have here is the ability to take all of these actions ba based on the methods and produce data or get information or put data out there. For this service, is actually a git. Let's take a look at some of the other web services examples that we have. WSDLs, rather. So we're going to copy this one. I'm going to put that in there instead, and then we're going to hit methods. Now this goes out to a different web service, and you can see here it's enumerating dynamically based on that list, and this is for weather.gov. And then as a special treat, we'll bring in the actual web service for Opalis here, which will be the same for you except you'd change your uh, server name. We're going to paste that in here, hit method, and this is a list of the available methods for the Apollos web service. So start policy, get policy, all these different things. And uh, like I said, the example in my quick integration kit video tutorial SDK uh, was an example of using this WSDL, but in uh, C Sharp. For this eight minute demo, we're actually going to use the combination of the Terra server and the weather to create a you know very simple example using web services. So let's go back and Delete that, paste in the Terra server, choose method. Now we're going to get into how to actually use the object itself. So you have the WSDL, you're going to choose the method, and then you're going to you know, request, uh, fill out the XML for the request payload. Let's do something simple, like convert place to Latin long point. Now nothing happened here, but if we hit this format hint button, it's dynamically creating the XML that is required for this call, the SOAP message. All we have to do is fill out city, state, and country. Easy enough. So we replace the string values here with city. Let's do San Antonio. State. Texas. And country. I think USA will work. So hit finish. Now this object is done. So let's take a look at it in the testing console. All right, let's just hit run here. So we can see the payload that we sent, and there should be a response payload down here. And there it is. So I'm going to copy and paste that into Notepad. So we can see here that we have the longitude, which is negative 97 point blah, 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 and latitude 29. We have received information back. Now all we would need to do is parse that information. And this is standard XML, so we could parse it with one of our foundation objects. So let's go query XML, which is still in the utilities category. So we grab that guy, connect him up like we always do, open him up. Now we could either, for this object, we could either reference a file 
or quote unquote text. So this is going to be the published data, subscribe published data for the response payload. So it just it's treating it as text. It's going to pass it on the data bus and it'll treat it as text. If you save the XML off and wanted to manipulate it beforehand, you could do that and then you could uh, call it from here. So all we need is the XPath query, something simple like this. Well, I'll get us the latitude. Now we're going to do this same exact thing. We'll change the name so it's a little easier. For longitude. So we're just going to copy this guy, paste him, hook him up, rename him, open him up, change the insides. So for long, and hit finish. Now for demonstration purposes, I'll send the information to a pop-up. Just fill this out. So we want the information from the latitude for the latitude, and that would be the query result. Longitude. From the longitude we query result. And then of course we might want what information we passed in. So we'll just do the uh, request payload. Request XML payload. And that comes from the invoke web services object, which we want the XML request payload. All right, we'll hit finish. And we'll go ahead and run this. So go ahead and check it in. Once it's checked in, we go ahead and run it. And it looks like it worked just fine. So we have the request XML payload, San Antonio, Texas, USA, with a latitude of 29, longitude of negative 97.96, so on and so forth. Looks like we're good to go there. Now what I've done here is use the evoke web services object and then two query XML objects to parse the information that we're getting back from the web service and then of course a pop-up which popped the information to the screen strictly for demonstration purposes. So you might ask yourself, well this is not that you know useful for me, I want to use it in my data center. Of course, querying you know, latitude and longitude of locations is not very useful, but this same method and same procedure applies to the invoke web services for any internal or external web service that you may have for your integration purposes. So this can be a third party application that has web services, we could integrate to it using this object. Or you can use the quick integration kit, whichever you prefer. This is easy, out of the box, and available right, right away with no coding or scripting, so this might be the better way. You will need a somewhat of a knowledge of uh, XPath. You could pick that up on the internet just by you know querying for different you know syntax and things like that. So let's move on to a little more substantial and fun example that I'll walk you through. You see, we have here we're going to check the weather for a particular place. You can see I'm passing information in city and state for uh, the actual workflow. So we'll use the operator console to initiate this. So we have the invoke web services object here. I've just renamed it to get latitude and longitude from place. Same exact setup here except I'm passing data in. Still using the, the query XML objects to get latitude and longitude. But now I'm going to pass that latitude and longitude into another invoke web services object, which is using that weather.gov site. And we're going to actually pass the latitude and longitude in here with some other information to get the weather for that latitude and longitude, you know, yeah, as of the last time it was recorded for that web service. And we're going to parse some information out using their query XML. And in this example, we're just getting a bunch of information out from that XML payload. We have a uh, SQL query in here just to associate um, what we mean by clear, partly cloudy, mostly cloudy, and overcast. No, no big deal there. There's just for the demonstration. Then we're going to actually generate an HTML file, which is kind of kind of fun, just with some information. You don't have to do this for the example. This is just so we could format the information in a way that would be impressive to a demonstration. And then we're going to open that web page in our Explorer. No, no big deal here. Let's just check this guy in. 
open the operator console and uh, kick them off. So under policies, eight minute demo, web services, and then the weather. All right, start policy weather checker. City, let's do San Antonio again. Texas, start. And then if everything works properly, we'll get a pop up with the web page that we've created from the web services calls from two different web services. We'll probably be able to watch it because it takes a little while for each object. You can see now it's on the find temps. Oh, it's already done. It's saying we have the GPS coordinates there. Temperature is 105, and I can tell you it is really hot today. And wind speed, 7 knots. It's partly cloudy. If I look out my window, that is accurate. This is uh, just a one simple example about uh, using the web services and the evoke web services object to create a website uh, or of information, a report. You could do the same thing for integrating different software to other different software on the Opalis data bus. Because once you integrate, say with web services or SQL or whatever, it's on the data bus, pass the data, create reports, create an integration, kick off actions. It's all up to you. Well, from a very hot San Antonio, Texas today, I uh, wish you well. I hope you uh, learned a little bit about the Invoke Web Services object from Opalis. We certainly appreciate you watching. Thank you.